of um, where you can go and I'll show it in a moment. But the, the, the first thing I went to, and I really could have gotten lost on this. I mean, completely lost on this website. Look at the inside of Jamie's studio. Yeah. I mean, that is Jamie in a nutshell. Whimsical, colorful, bright, just fabulous. But now look at this. This is the thing that's going to get you guys. That's the inside of the studio. Where in the world could that be? Because let's go back and look again. It's pretty darn big, right? It's so colorful. Let's take a look at the outside. Yep. Yep, a warehouse. And I just thought that was brilliant. So, uh, I mean, we just rented our new warehouse and it's a big one. And my guess is probably you could get something um, in your area for not a lot of money and get yourself a studio. So I thought that was pretty cool. But take a look at her web page. Um, I would <clears throat> Google Jamie Fingal, and you can see there how it's spelled, J-A-M-I-E-F-I-N-G-A-L. And then, because I think I looked up Twisted Sister, and I think I got some kind of porn things or something. I don't know if you know that, Jamie. <laughs> I'm just saying, okay. So I would Google Jamie Fingal, and then um, and then there's you know that's where I saw her studio. She's got a whole lot of really cool stuff. Um, so we actually actually I wanted to get her back on the quilt show to do faces, and then well, it all broke loose, right? So there's the end of that part. Okay, so let's take a look at. Um, oh, okay. Hey, Lois, I hope you're listening. Um, uh, Helen put this up in the forum, and I think Dusty originally found it. Remember on Wednesday how that one gal grabbed a Sharpie instead of her friction pen for her label, and it ran? So apparently this stuff might work. I would definitely sample it. Um, my guess is you could probably get it on Amazon. I honestly have no idea. But um, check it out. Uh, I, I'm, I think this is something I'm going to go order when this is over just so that I've got it. Because when disaster strikes, it's, you want to be able to take care of it. Just like you should always have Centropol in your next to your washing machine. It will take out fabrics that have run and all that. And if you order from our store, I mean, you can get big jugs of it. That's what I have. But I have what what we have in our store is what I call an emergency kit of it, you know? You just, next time you get an order, throw some of that stuff in because you just should have it on hand. It too is a miracle worker. Okay, then we have Timis. Oh, look at that. I just love this with the martini glass and the reindeer up there and the snow skis and all that. She had a blast doing this. So thank you. I'm just, I love your hair too. That, I really pay attention to the hair, you guys. So let's go to ID. Now this is not her. I think she said it was her sister or good friend, maybe her sister. And her family concurred that it even looked like her. So I'm don't remember she said she's getting it for Christmas or what, but okay, here's stars. Lori sent this to me and she said, his was hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it, this, is, this is not a start your first quilt, but you should be thrilled with what you're getting. And I could even see a background border in black with wonderful jeweled colors on it. So, I don't know if I told you this story. I think I did, but it's worth, I'm going to say it again. I, I'm sure I told you the story, but one of my grandees was complaining that something was really, really hard. And, and I said, you know what I say to students? And I did say this, but now I'm into it. Uh, you know what I say to students if they say something's hard? And, and uh, I think it was Lennox goes, um, I'm sorry, or, or you can do it. And I said, no, good. And the kid was just like, what? Throw a bucket of water on her face. If it's hard, you're learning, 
Okay, so I'm glad you stuck with it, Lori, because that is really something you've got going on. Okay, let's take a look at Kathy's. Okay, this is blurry because the um, picture was too small, but I just wanted to put it up because she just did a simple Lemoyne star instead of all those triangles. And also she did the light bulb border, which I have done a couple times, and that's just as fun as doing the holly and leaves. And how I do it is I will sew a strip, look for the light bulbs, I will sew a strip of green onto different colors, and then I will cut out the light bulb shape so that I don't have to do a bulb and a base. It's all been sewn together, and then it's super easy to cut out. We are going to get to potholes in a minute. Curtail. Oh, curtail. Beautiful. And and we saw this before you had the border on. Look, you guys, how she did Rick Rack for the vine. Okay, that's pretty darn cute, okay? And then my question is, are you going to put some leaves on, or is this it? Um, maybe some hearts in the corner. I just think you need a little bit more on it, but you can also tell me to mind my own beeswax, all right? And this is Mama Mouse, which we saw Wednesday. She had not yet bound it, but I wanted you to check out her quilting design on it. I see the Christmas trees in there. That's super fun. I would not have thought of that. So make a mental note of this, and you can always go back and look at it again if you so wish. All right? So thanks for putting up um, pictures and all that. I really appreciate it. I want to talk now about potholes when you're working with quilts with a lot of solid white, like we are if you're doing it how, exactly how I did it. The problem when you have a lot of white is that there are, yes sir? Um, it took a long time to get YouTube up there finally up, so what happened? welcome. John just said YouTube was um, a little difficult to get up but no you you don't do it they they're supposed to do it right right but i would he had to go in there but anyways um it's about 12 after if you want to see jamie fingal's house and you do you can just go back and watch the beginning because just right now we're getting into the instructions so we're good so sorry about that that's technology right so anyways when you're working with white a lot of unseemly things can happen okay and the fact of it is it did happen to me on my quilt so what let me get this here i want to get this up here and see if i can show you i'm hoping that the camera will let us get down there and see where's my finger all right I'm gonna go down more and I'll re, I'll re uh... So right here are threads that I did not trim off. And what happens is, is when I make a quilt, I get all super excited. This is on the back side, you know, the threads. I get all super excited and I don't take time trimming. All, and I should, shame on me. Also, it could have been fraying because I think I used white thread all the way through. It could have been fraying from this fabric, which migrated over to here. All right. Then here's, excuse me, close your eyes. I'll tell you when to open them. I'll tell you when to open them. Okay, open up. Here's, here's another one. And now if I were going to be putting this in competition, um, that alone would knock it out. I mean, I just... So don't get going so fast on this that you don't take the time to trim it. These, this quilt was made under an ex, in a, a fabulous, I mean fabulous, John is saying right on John, this particular quilt was made under a tremendous time crunch. And so all I could do, I think I had like a month to get it down, done from beginning to end and, um, um, so I wasn't as careful. 
Someone just said my quilting that was beautiful on this. I didn't do it. Diane Schweikert did. So anyways, oh, the stain remover. Okay, so Cindy said that stain remover can be found at paperwishes.com. They have sample fabrics for $1.50 as well as the full order. Oh, thank you. Okay, so that's where we can get that stuff to take out the red felt tip pen. Paperwishes.com. Thanks, guys. Um, so here is a really gross example of not trimming threads, and this would be a disaster. You know I love red work, and I have red work quilts that this has happened, but these are blocks that I just happen to have. So let's take a look at the lady that has, it's, it's an old piece. Okay, there we go. And look at all this behind here. It's a mess, okay, a complete mess. Well, yeah, right? And that's why when I do red work, I do red work without using knots, without weaving in. If you go back to these lessons back in the beginning, so my guess would be in April, March, April, I did a little uh, red work project and I showed how I did knotless red work and, and all of that. So you can avoid all this. I mean, what a mess, all right? Now, as an aside, if you're doing red work, there are people nowadays who will put a piece of batting on the back and then do their thing. And so that if there's stuff like this hanging out, it doesn't show. But that's, you know, I prefer to go for the kill and not have any of this hanging around. So, I mean, I mean, these are cuter than all get out, but oh my, I mean, come on. Oh, <laughs> geez. <laughs> that's a cute little bird. Okay, so the other thing that can happen, and I learned this from Sally Collins. When you are piecing um, things together, on this side, I wanna see this fabric. This is so elementary, guys. And on this side, I wanna see the white fabric. And then that way, for ease of construction, if I have to press to the white for ease of construction, it doesn't show through the red on the back. On this one, I purposely did not do it correctly. On this side, I see white and the red. On this side, I see red. So I'm so you'll say, well, press to the dark and get on with it. You don't always want to press to the dark. Again, ease of construction. So when I go like this, I wonder if you can see it. Not really, but you you know it, well a little bit right there. You know, it, it's going to show. So that's when you're going to want to take, sorry guys, either once you've got the thing the right size, take your rotary cutter and just shear that sucker off. All right. It, it You know, as long as it's, you know, that little of a sliver. Okay. So that's another thing you can do. And again, this is when you're working with a lot of white fabric. However, now we have to talk about quilting it um, because that too what you choose for your back and what you choose for your batting is a consideration. Let's talk about batting first. If you use a batting, and actually it was Lilo who gave me this tip, um, if your batting has a cast or a color to it, if you have got this you know, beautiful white quilt, like our holiday quilt, and you put a batting that's not um, white, it can dull it down, okay? And I think I spoke about this before too. Uh, once upon a time, Hobbs had a black polyester and um, Carol Lee at the Cotton Patch didn't carry it because she was afraid somebody would put it on a black quilt, say with yellow stars, and then it would dull the yellow stars out. So your, your batting is important, okay? Now, another thing is if you wanna consider your backing. So when I am doing a quilt like this holiday quilt and there's all this white, I will do a very white or light backing. If I have something that's a little bit crazier, I will like, like the basket quilt. Let's take a look at the basket quilt here. Um, yes, there's white, but not really. There's print on it. 
So on the back of this, I chose to have two of my fabric lines. These are thimbles, and it is way out of print. And this is polka dot. I, I mean, I love it because it looks so good with it, and it's my fabric line. But if I were to put this, I mean, the colors are right. The colors are right. Sorry, I don't mean to talk when my back is to you. But if I put that backing on this particular quilt, the holiday quilt, it would be a disaster, okay? But I also want to say that if I have a colorful quilt, if you go on the backing, you might find three, four, five, or six, seven different fabrics. Okay, something else you want to think about when you are piecing your backing is always cut off the salvage. I didn't used to do that. And sometimes those salvages, if the thing gets washed, will go, whoosh, okay, um, especially, and also, especially if you're hand quilting, right? Of course you want to cut it off then. Also, if you're hand quilting, I would consider on the backing, pressing the seams open, all right? And if that's the case, you're gonna to wanna to use thread that is of the same value or color source of what the backing is because when you press open, you can see the little, you know, little stitches like that. So, um, I, you know, backings are a lot of fun. And in the early days when I was traveling uh, on the East Coast, people were like, what, what are you doing on your backing? And they, they couldn't believe it. And I mean, now I think it's universal, but you gotta put the brakes on when you're working with something that has a lot of white. The other thing is that um, I remember quilting a quilt with a polyester batting in it, and it was an airplane quilt. It was for my dad. There was a lot of white in it, a lot. And there was this red bomber fabric, uh, airplane fabric. And I thought, oh, it's gotta be on the back. It's perfect, couldn't be better, because the quilt was red, black, and white, and the the bomber flap fabric was red with white airplanes and a little bit of black on it. And as I sat there and hand quilted it with the polyester batting, hand quilted it, I want you to get this whole picture, the backing was starting to come up the color. And it wasn't that it was running, it was that the polyester um, kind of was just like a glazed window. And it was good stuff, it wasn't cheap stuff. So, I mean, there's so many variables on when you're choosing your backing. Another thing I'm just gonna throw out for grins is that if you are hand quilting, don't use batiks. Just don't do it because they are really hard to quilt through. Again, ask me how I know. You're looking at 40 something years of experience and. And I'm not the sharpest tack, all right? Sometimes I forget and then I do it again and again and again. So these were just some considerations I wanted you to think about as you prepare your backing, as you before you baste it or before you take it to your long armor, um, make sure all those little tails and all of that are off. Just please do it, okay? Uh, I mean, it's... Not that horrible, but it would be remiss for me to not bring this up and discuss that aspect. And this is for all quilts. Um, so what is going on this weekend for you? Well, for most of you, okay? Um, Dee is going to, on Saturday morning, tomorrow, Pacific time, going to talk about how to piece intimidating blocks. I think this sounds really good, okay? Um, I, I, I just get on like how you do this. She is a very, very good teacher. She is very calm. Her voice is very relaxing. And she shamed me because on Saturday, she was working with three cameras. We're like, how are you doing that? Because when we tried to do three cameras with the iPhones, it was a mess. But she, um, John ordered me another document camera. So we'll see. So, um, but I'm not gonna be there because I'm gonna be teaching or lecturing, I don't wanna say teaching, lecturing. Um, I, what color thread did you quilt the holiday quilt with? Kind of, yeah, white. I did it with, I did not do it. Diane did it, white. I'll show you a close up in a minute so you can see. Um, I'm going to be giving my lecture to the Empire Guild in New York at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, my time also. 
But the good news is I can still learn from D because even when you can't watch these things in real time, you can go back and watch it in your time. You just simply have to go, uh, the easiest way is to go to the front page of thequiltshow.com, scroll down, and then there's a playlist, okay? So let me, let's take a look at that. Thank you for bringing up the quilting because it can be scary when you've got all these big reds. Again, Diane Schweikert did it. Um, let me tune it in a little bit. And then I want to talk about the raffle quilt. Oh, I can't say that. It's not a raffle quilt anymore. Um, but look, that looks pretty darn good, right? So, and I, yeah, my things are pretty scrappy, but yeah, it's just white. Or maybe one off of white. I, I don't know. I wasn't in her room when we picked it, but rather than dark, it's light, okay? So, so. So, uh, comment, the orange steady is great. Love it for my Berdina table. Okay, what she's talking about are the, I have the blue one, but these things are unbelievable. You can um, lead in, they slide for when you're quilting and all that good stuff. So thank you for that. We do have them in stock too. We have both sides. And I'm gonna, let me see, John's bringing in stuff here. How to clean old red work blocks. I think I do know, and I don't know the name of it. But shoot, I'll tell you on Monday, okay? Um, I can show you, I can tell you what Cindy Needham has me cleaning my hankies with. I'll test one of the red work blocks and we'll see what happened, okay? Because these are pretty grubby. I'll let you know. I'll let you know on Monday. Thanks for that question. Okay, back to the quilt. The quilt. So, uh, Sue Rapp got hold of me. A couple other people got hold of me. I already knew because I would get up and see how generous you guys were every single morning. Um, and that what I put out on GoFundMe was this, was that you give any amount of money and somebody will win this quilt. And that's why I said, please don't do it anonymously. Please do your name. And then it was on uh, the 21st of December, we would announce who won. And whoever wins gets to decide what food bank the money that we are earning goes to. Well, that is a breach of their policy. All right. And I get it. I get it. I get it. We were just so excited we didn't bother to read the rules. I know none of you have ever um, done that before. So how, um, how, what, they put it back up. They got, I'm sorry, I'm reading questions. I can't do that while I'm doing this. Um, they wrote to us and said we had to take it down. And, but it was a really gracious letter. And the person told us exactly what we had to say. Okay, it is not a contest. It is not a giveaway. You can't do that. All right, but we can on our site. But, well, I'm not going to begin before. Uh, we'll worry. Oh, John has another idea. But let's go back to GoFundMe. Okay, okay. Um, so here's what you need. So he rewrote it. All right, and it says, how, "What did you say, John?" Come tell them what you said. I can't remember what you said. Come say it. I'm not going to repeat. I'm not going to repeat what you're saying. Come here. We're just saying that you're giving the money to the food bank for people in need. That's it. That's all this is for. This is all this is for. What we'll do is on the site the weekend before the 21st, we will do a contest for everybody to enter to be part of receiving the quilt itself. And anyone who has donated will automatically be part of that contest. But when you but go- it's on our site, but, not GoFundMe. But when you go and look, it's understand at GoFundMe, there's no contest, because that's why we got blocked. But listen to me, do not put your name anonymous. Do not put your name anonymous because this quilt is not going to stay with me. Okay? Are we all putting it together here? Um, Retro Clean, Sue, that's exactly what it is. Uh, Retro Clean is a good heirloom quilt block cleaner. Okay. And then how I got 
how I got here. Oh, as far as um, you're Ohio here, you're late. Don't worry about it. You can go watch the beginning. Uh, these things are housed forever. Somebody texted and said, how do you get, if you have threads inside your quilt, how do you get them out? <clears throat> and I, I, I suppose, let's go back to the cameras. I suppose what you could do, and I have not done this, Oh, I can't find wherever the thing was is take a little pin. Well, like take a little pin and try and fish it out. But I don't really think you can. I mean, I my fear would be that I'd be poking a hole in this. So I am not going to recommend that at all. Just trim it up. As my dad would always say, don't get your underwear in a bundle on having to get out of your house so fast or to get it basted so fast. Or don't get excited on your first cruise. I remember... Okay, so Clover Sells, Karen says, a hook to remove the threads. I haven't used it. I haven't used it. I'd say put on your seatbelt rather than have to worry about it after the car crash, okay? Um, my dad said, don't get excited on your first cruise. And I remember we were on the first cruise, and you know how they take you to the safety check and all that? And I'm like getting all worked up. I mean, just completely worked up. And I'm sitting here going, wait a minute. I, I, some man said to me, don't get excited on your first cruise. <laughs> So, and other people are saying crochet hooks. It works. Um, okay, Robbie. Hey, Robbie. Robbie said, do what the other gal said. Okay, I'm looking at all this. Um, not my favorite method. It might leave. There's now here. Lilo's in here. It's not her favorite method. It might leave holes. Oh, here's Jenny here. Cover soft touch thread pick works well. Clover soft touch threads pick works well. Hey, Jenny would know what she's talking about, and so would Lilo. Okay, I'm looking at all this. Try using a very fine crochet hook, size zero, zero. This is why I love you guys, okay? I think we're good. So don't forget D tomorrow. I'll come and watch it after the fact. Robbie just waved at me. Hey, Robbie, Robbie, I have to... <laughs> Robbie bought a Q20 because I teased her into it. <laughs> it's good, huh? You love it. If you don't have the laser light yet, go get that, Robbie. It's a... It's a, it's a it's a great. Okay, then Sandra says, after you remove the thread, scratch the area. What you're doing is you're getting the threads pulled back together. I may have to try that, but kind of scares me, okay? So, hey, have a good weekend. Enjoy Dee's class. And um, if you wonder what the green thing is behind me, keep wondering, but it's about you. So, I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Now I got to find how to get out of here. There we go. Bye-bye.